you've got your store set up and your theme is done and you show it to people, one of the very first things that's going to happen, hopefully, is that they're going to support you and they're going to order your products. And you need to know how to see those orders, how to fulfill those orders, and how to make sure that you get the payment for those orders. So I've set up a tutorial store just for these tutorials. And I'm going to take you in um, to the order screen right now where I've got a couple of test orders that I've set up. Note that I basically haven't done anything with this store yet. So you'll be watching me create it and watch it evolve over the next little while. So if we just click up here in the upper left hand corner on the screen, it says orders. It will take us to all orders automatically. And you'll see that in the last 15 minutes, I've created two. This one I created manually, the 1001. And the second one was actually done on the site, which I have set up with um, a test payment processor so that we don't actually take payment from people at all. You can see that my product prices are out of control, so I'm really glad we're testing and not using my real credit card. So if we go into the first order that I created um, using the create order button in the upper right hand corner, you can see the order details are pretty sparse. Um, there's not customer contact information because I didn't input any, no notes from the customer, etc. Uh, all you can see here is that that person ordered a cool product in size small and sample shirt in size medium. There was tax applied appropriately because I have set up my tax settings in the sample shop uh, and that was the total and I marked it as paid when I created the order. So you'll see um, there's nothing really for you to do with it other than pull the products and then contact this customer to make sure they're going to come pick up because you can't ship obviously with no address. If you or anyone in your staff needed to make a comment about this order, um, for example, you know, contact a customer on such and such date, you could do that here. So you can use emojis, you can tag specific staff members, you can attach files, anything that you need to do um, to keep track of people. So you could say fulfilling today and just click post. And then any of your staff that goes in and helps manage your orders uh, will see this. This also works in the other direction. So if your staff are fulfilling orders and you just want to go in and check on something, you can see the comments that they have left on the, on these orders. Okay. There's a few different actions that you can take here. You can print off this order, save trees. Don't do this unless you need to, but the option is there. You can refund this order. So if the customer asks to return these products at any point, you can do that. Um, you can choose to edit this order. So change the products that they've ordered. So say uh, the customer reached out and asked for both shirts to be in a medium, for example, you could edit the order to reflect that. And just as a good practice, I would also take a screenshot of the customer's request and attach it as a file here in the comments. That way you always got proof that the customer asked you to do that in case they decide to not be so fun later. Okay. More actions. You can duplicate this order if you want to. Um, you can cancel it. You can archive it or view the order status page. If you go and look at the order status page, this is just what the customer sees. Okay. Um, so it's just showing that the order is confirmed. If they click on the link in their email, that's what they'll see at any point. Once you've pulled these products and you're done with this order, you don't need to look at it anymore. You just click mark as fulfilled. Okay. It will be marked as manually fulfilled because there's no shipping address on this one. Um, and then, you know, we could add shipping addresses if we want to. So we select how many items we fulfilled one, cool product, one sample shirt, um, and just fulfill items there. We click through, we could print a packing slip up there if we needed to. And voila, this order is fulfilled. Two items are fulfilled and it automatically, you'll see up here, it has automatically archived this order. So you don't need to worry about that. Okay. Then we go back to all orders and let's show you what you would need to do on an order that comes in through the website um, if your payment settings are set to the default. Okay, so when you're setting up your shopping cart, um, one of the settings in Shopify allows you to choose whether you authorize the person's credit card when they order and then charge them later or if you charge them immediately for their order. The reason it defaults to authorize now and charge later is in case you have to make any changes to their order. That way you can only charge them for the accurate amount. 
So let's say someone ordered two products, but you only had one in stock, you could remove that item from their order and then only actually charge them for that one amount rather than having to issue a partial refund and incurring basically payment processing fees for the whole order when you didn't need to. Okay. Um, and if that's a little bit confusing, I'm going to go through all the payment setup options in a future tutorial. So make sure you like and subscribe so that you can watch that as well. But for right now, let's just go into this order uh, with the, basically the default settings. Again, uh, uh, fake payment gateway. So we're, we're just testing here. No one's actually being charged for anything. Um, we do have an address here to ship to in this case. We've again got the, the taxes being charged and everything. So if we wanted to fulfill our cool product, we would first capture payment before you start packaging anything. That's my preference. If you know you have everything in the order, just hit capture payment. And it shows you how much to process for. Accept it. They, there's already an authorization on the card, so you know it will go through, but this captures the payment for sure, right as you start packaging it, okay? Um, then you go up and create your shipping label if required, if you're shipping and you're not doing local pickup, you go through and create your shipping label. Now it might stop me here. Yes, because I don't have any shipping carriers set up. Um, but this is essentially what it would look like without all these big red warning labels. I'm just going to take you back after this. Um, but lets you choose your box. It lets you choose the weight with the package, the weight of the product. Um, email shipment details to customers today if that's what you're doing the day you're shipping it out it just lets you set up exactly how you're going to ship this this product now because I don't have shipping set up on the store yet I can't actually fake buy a shipping label so we're gonna cancel this for now and again I'm gonna take you through all of the shipping setup in a future tutorial so if you want to catch that one please like this video, subscribe, and ask for that one in the comments. Uh, the more comments I get about specifics, the more likely I am to prioritize that specific question. Um, so let me know and, and I'll make sure to get that done more quickly if there's lots of demand for it. So if we had created the shipping label, this would automatically say fulfilled because we can't. We're going to go mark as fulfilled and go through that same screen again. If there's a tracking number, shipping carrier, we could input that information here. Send details of the shipment to your customer now that lets them know what their tracking number is and that their shipment has been sent. Okay. And then again, make sure that it's one of one, the shipping address is right, and you fulfill items. And again, fulfilling this order will automatically archive it. So now you've accepted payment for the order, you have fulfilled the order, and it has been archived. You have no active orders waiting. Uh, waiting for you to process. And again, you can print this order, you can refund this order, you can edit this order, duplicate it on archive or view the order status page. I'm going to show you what that looks like really quickly with the order actually fulfilled. Um, so you can track order with arrive. This is something that I don't really use a lot, but it's an option. And again, in that shipping tutorial, I'll go over a little bit more. Uh, it shows that the information is confirmed and that updates are coming. Okay. So that's it for handling orders. Um, if you want to go back into all orders and see your archived orders, uh, they're all still right here. If you want to prioritize only the ones that are open, you just click open and it will show you anything that um, has not been fulfilled yet. It's the fastest way for you to go in on your daily workflow when you're fulfilling orders. Okay. Um, I can't think of anything else that you might need to see uh, on the orders screen. Uh, we can get into drafts and abandoned checkouts later. There's lots to share on that. So I want to keep this tutorial short. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments. Make sure you subscribe so you get the future tutorials. Um, if this all seems really scary and super overwhelming, uh, reach out and I'm happy to help um, get your store set up or give you some direction on how to manage what you're, what you're doing. Uh, thanks so much for watching and have an awesome day.